Hey, it's Pat here, and in this video, I wanna share with you 10 lessons I've learned since inventing a physical product, starting at the beginning all the way to the end. So I want you to stick around and watch this video because there are so many lessons learned that are applicable for any sort of business owner, especially if you're thinking about doing a physical product and you've probably had ideas for physical products in the past, but even if you're sticking in the digital realm, I recommend you watch this because these are important reminders for you. So to start off, I need to take you back into time to Los Angeles 2017 at a conference called Vid Summit, which my videographer Caleb and I attended. And we noticed while we were there that a number of attendees, especially vloggers, had one of these guys called a Gorillapod. It's made by Joby, it's a great tool. A number of vloggers use them, not just for putting down their cameras and taking really interesting shots or wrapping around poles, things like that, but they've actually bent them in a way like this, and you've seen other vloggers, probably popular vloggers like Casey Neistat or Peter McKinnon, use them in such a way where they are holding them out like this, and it's kind of bent at an angle to remove the camera further from your face so that you can have more of a wide angle, and that's really smart. But we noticed that there's a lot of problems with using this tool for that purpose. Number one, it's hard to go back and forth between tripod mode and for me especially, somebody who likes things to go back to like perfect, uh, it's hard to get back to perfectly uh, straight. Um, secondly, it's, for me at least, because I'm a pretty much a weakling, it's hard for me to go back to tripod mode. So we were like, there's gotta be a better solution. So Caleb and I, we put our heads together and we we're like, well, what if there was a way to have the tripod legs come together and turn into like a handle and have it easily switch back and forth? And just at that moment, which was, I don't know, fate or whatever, our good friend Richie Norton from Prouduct.com came along and we pitched him that idea. He has a company, Prouduct.com, that helps entrepreneurs take these ideas in their head and turn them into actual physical products. We pitched him the idea and he was like, dude, yeah, let's do it. And we were like, really? And because, you know, we get these ideas all the time, but having that person be there to validate that idea just gave us the idea to keep going one step further. So we decided that we were gonna go as far as actually creating a prototype just to see what this would look and feel like to determine whether or not we could actually, you know, continue to move forward and build this thing. Which brings me to lesson number one, which is it's really important to understand exactly what the problem is that your potential product or idea would solve. And when we spoke with Richie, he really drilled it in our heads to understand really what, what's the problem that we're solving here? Like, yeah, this is cool, you can create this little thing that can do this, whatever, but what is actually the problem that you're solving? Any good business or product solves a problem that a specific group of people have. Our group of people, we're gonna be videographers, specifically vloggers, and the problem of using uh, a device that can help them switch from tripod mode to vlogger mode and have them just have more time to create and film versus struggling with a little tripod. So we had our target audience in mind and we knew the problems that we had. Luckily, we were in that audience, we had the same problems, so we were then set on the right foot. So after speaking with Richie for a little bit, we realized that this was gonna be a very expensive process to go from idea to actually creation. There's a lot of moments in the physical product uh, sort of journey that require uh, different decisions that affect the price point and how much you spend even before you make your first dollar, if you make your first dollar. And so we had to then determine, okay, like how can we cut the costs as much as possible? Because this is really a side gig for us and we just really had no idea what we were doing. And so we learned how important your prototyping process is and that when you start prototyping, meaning creating something that at least gives you a feel for how the thing will look and, and work, uh, making it as simple as possible. So we started with not any of these things that move, but actually just the shape. So we looked at a number of vloggers who were using this Gorillapod and we started to kind of see what the usual shape was and we started to, to determine what the angle of this thing might be that we were gonna have as be handles that would be put together. So this is the, this is the very first thing that was created which um, is just made of like acrylic. I mean, you could even take it even further and just start with like cardboard, right? Just to get a feel for how something looks and how something feels. And then this evolved into other ideas just by having this one initial prototype. It was like, wow, what if we added this? And what if we added that? So we added a little thing here at the bottom which added like some straps to keep the weight off of your arms so that you can hold heavier cameras and all this stuff. But then we were like, this is insane. We're making this, we're already doing what's called feature creep, which is another big uh, thing you have to worry about when it comes to these physical products, especially, but even, even things like software or even your online courses or what have you, it's really, really easy to start adding a ton of things in there that may or may not be required. The most important thing is to get a MVP or a minimum viable prototype, if you will, 
to share with others to collect feedback. And so that's what we ended up doing. We actually uh, experimented with different kinds of just uh, materials. We had a material discussion early on just to understand what it would feel like if it was aluminum or metal versus others, plastic. And then we had our very first 3D model printed, which was this one here, which um, was really, really cool to see. To get it in the mail and actually see something that was in our heads and I, an idea that we had that actually worked and it's a little flimsy right now. It actually initially had these little um, clips here that you'd have to kind of pull back to then move. Wow, that was really loud, like that. And, and this already gave us a number of ideas on, wow, what could we do better? How can we make it uh, easier? How can we make it um, lighter? How can we make it less you know, hard to work with or, you know, uh, all those kinds of things. We had yet to share it with anybody uh, outside of us, us and our team, but just getting to this point alone was really cool to see like, wow, this, this could actually work. This isn't a dumb idea, um, but this isn't nearly done uh, yet. Now, the third lesson here is that this stuff takes time. I mean, I work in the digital space, many of you do as well, and we live in a world where, well, we can create an online course in a couple weeks, if not sooner. We can put up a YouTube video in an instant. We can do a Google search in a nanosecond. Um, physical products take a lot of time, especially when you're in the prototyping phase. So even up to this point here with the first 3D printed prototype, I mean, this took about a month to a month and a half to, to actually get. Um, and then even moving forward into here, I mean, we're looking at a whole year's worth of effort here. And patience is gonna be a really important thing here. You need to actually, yes, work on things, but realize that a lot of this stuff, especially when it comes to the manufacturing or if you're using other teams like product to help engineer certain things, I mean, this stuff takes time. So moving forward, we printed a few more prototypes and just versions. Uh, this one's a little bit more flat and thinner. So we were just exploring how that felt. Uh, you know, when, when they're all together, changing different grip handles and that sort of thing. And then we have this 3D printed model. It was printed with a white plastic, actually, which looked really cool. It was dipped in rubber at the handle. But what was really interesting is that you can see this is the first time that um, it, the prototype actually had cutouts. And the reason for that is so that it was lighter. And, it, and if it's lighter and it has less plastic or, or, or things to actually shape it, uh, it's gonna be cheaper. And this is stuff that we, Caleb and I, wouldn't have ever thought of. And this takes me to lesson number four, which is if you're gonna do something, you wanna work with people who know what they're doing, right? And a lot of times when we start businesses, we're doing a lot of things that we've never done before, which is totally cool. It's cool to dive in, but it's really, really simple to go find people who have done things before you, who are experts, who know about these things, who can make decisions for you that are about questions that you didn't even know you had. So we're, we were able to cut out the holes, which made it lighter and it would save us costs over time. But we realized like, actually we started playing with this and holding it for quite a while. And even though this was 3D printed and we know it's plastic and it's not going to be the actual material, um, some of the clips here that we had to hold, hold it in place when it snaps in, as you can see here, it kind of broke on this side and it showed me that like, wow, there's a lot of small different pieces in here that, you know, I don't know if we need it to be done that way what can we do to have the same motion of opening and closing it and keeping it there without having to have these little clips that would actually require two hands to use? Is there, is there something we could do? Which brings me to lesson number five. And lesson number five is try anything. You're at the phase where you are allowed to try anything and there are really no stupid ideas. There's ideas that aren't gonna work, but it's good to try those ideas because now you know they don't work and you can try something else. So it was at this point that we decided to add magnets to keep things open or keep things closed without having a bunch of mechanisms and extra pieces and parts in here, which would, again, save us a little bit of money and hopefully make it even easier to use. So that led us to this 3D printed model, which inside this mechanism here, which we also had a few other small uh, 3D printouts of just that mechanism alone, um, it includes magnets so that when it opens, it actually snaps into place, but it can still be with a little bit of force brought back. So that felt really cool. It actually has a really nice tactile feel to it, which was kind of unexpected. So this is again, going into lesson number five, which is just try anything at this point and see if it works or not. Now this one, we also added another idea, try anything, which was these grips that go all the way up because we felt it would give people more options for holding it either up or below. We just wanted to add that in there so that when we finally handed this to people, we would see whether or not they would actually use it or not. Caleb and I had gone to a number of conferences and visited a number of places where vloggers and other YouTubers existed. And we started sharing it with them just to kind of get some initial reactions. And we actually filmed some of those reactions, which was just really cool. I think the coolest thing uh, and, and the best reaction that we got from people was people who were just going like, 
oh, of course, like, yes, this is, uh, this makes total sense. Like, why hasn't this been invented already? Which was great validation for us. And we weren't quite at the point of asking people whether or not they would buy it or not. We just wanted to get gut reactions from people to see how they would use it, not giving them any instruction to see if it was intuitive or not. And it actually started to become something that we could see people using and people could see using themselves too, which was really interesting. So it was at this point when we started collecting feedback that we started internally discussing what the material was gonna be made of. And we had discussed probably five or 10 different materials from aluminum to various kinds of glass injected molds and other kinds of things. And we decided that we were going to experiment with a couple and actually actually have them made. Now, when I talked about earlier about how expensive this process was, I mean, it gets very expensive. So these two prototypes here are made of two different materials. This one was, I think, a nylon based plastic kind of thing, which was, it's stronger than plastic, but not quite as strong as this aluminum one here. This aluminum one costs about $2,000 to make at the manufacturing plant because it had to be handmade. This one uh, was made with, um, I think it was just like injected molded or printed out of some uh, in some way. Um, but as you can see, like even if I, if I show you like this, like the plastic wasn't laying the way it wanted to. Um, and we also spray painted it red because we were taking it to an event and we're like, hey, let's just, you know, spray paint it a very obvious color that people could see. And it, it worked okay and people loved it, but um, it, it feels a little bit different. It's not quite as strong and it's a little bit flimsy as you can see here and the paint started to chip off, which was something that was really interesting too. But it still did the job of capturing people's attention when we were at events like VidCon, which is where we bought bro brought both of these. So again, try anything. You see these little spacers here uh, that uh, kind of reduces the sound when you bring it together, but we, we saw that it added a little bit of space in between. We added some feet on here. Um, again, just trying a bunch of different things. This is the phase to do that. Now, taking this to craft and commerce, we actually did have an opportunity to share it with Casey, which is really cool, thanks to an introduction from the founder of the company. And he grabbed it and he had some great comments to share about it. He uh, has not endorsed it, I just wanna be completely upfront with that, um, yet. But uh, he did have some really nice comments like, well, I would prefer it to be black, all black because videographers, I mean, we don't wanna really be seen all the time. Uh, we just want things to be kind of just hidden almost. So black, that made complete sense. And he wanted it to be a little bit smaller as well. We had a camera on it. Um, this is also the first prototype where we introduced the little thing at the bottom that screws into the camera that you have at the top. And we also found that this little tiny knob here was too small. So we definitely made it bigger in the next prototype, which was definitely influenced by Casey. Before we printed it out in aluminum again with another $2,000 prototype, we 3D printed it, of course, to get the right size, get the right knob size. And this is the final 3D printed prototype that was printed with the right magnets and stuff. He Again, 3D printed and prototype, not the real thing. But that eventually led to the final prototype, as you can see here, which is all black and super smooth and a larger knob and two cases and many other people's specifications. And we've shared this directly with a number of videographers who thankfully want it as soon as possible, which is really cool. So we've gotten a lot of validation verbally from people. We've actually had people offer to pay for our prototypes, uh, which is you know secondary validation too. But we're really excited because the general feedback from the vlogger space is that they're ready and willing to pay for it when it goes live on Kickstarter, which if you are ready to sign up uh, for the waitlist or check it out on Kickstarter if it's live there already, you can check it out at SwitchPod. Dot co. But don't worry, I have a few more lessons to share with you related to this entire process. But hopefully you can see that it's taken a long time to get to this final prototype, which again, this is aluminum. We are going to create the final product in a different material that's easier to work with in the manufacturing process. But in order for us to get there, we have to raise money for the molds, which are gonna cost anywhere between 50 to $60,000. What the molds do is it allows us to injection mold and create these almost like on a manufacturing line versus the aluminum ones here, the prototypes, which have to be handmade individually. So the cost is gonna be significantly less per unit, obviously, coming from the prototype versus actually manufacturing it in a plant. All right, so let me put these all back on the line here and I'll share lesson number seven with you now, which is you might be wondering, well, like what about patenting and protecting your idea? Should you share your idea with anybody before you do that? And it was recommended to us by a number of people to not share it actually by, I think this phase here, we had already gotten a patent pending. 
I think we just got it on LegalZoom and there's many other different places that you can get a patent pending at. Um, and that's just to protect yourself and, and your ideas. Now, obviously, and we've had a lot of people say, Pat, this is you know a US patent. What about when you, know, you come out with this thing? What's stopping other people in China from creating it? Which is a really, really important question. And it's a tough one to answer because honestly, somebody in China could probably rip this off, which is why you wanna have good relationships with people who know what's going on over there to protect it as much as possible. Um, but you know, I think a part of competition is realizing that you know you have a brand and that you are hopefully going to stay on top of things to sort of stand out from the competition that may come your way. Um, but patenting and protecting your idea is really important, and you want to do that as early in the process as possible, which again adds to the cost of this entire process. So, for example, the guys Tom and Dan over at Studio Neat who develop physical products and kickstart them, uh, they don't do patents because a patent is only as good as how much you will enforce them. Although I feel like it protects you. If a pe person sees a patent there, they're less likely to do whatever it is they might be doing to copy your stuff. But anyway, uh, Tom and Dan have been great as well as a number of other people. We connected with them uh, not too long ago and they've been super helpful. And I think that's that's the big lesson for lesson number eight here is that there's a lot of people who have done a lot of these things that you're attempting to do before you connect with them. I mean, not just experts who can actually help you build these products like Product does, but actual people who are there just and willing to help. Uh, Tom and Dan have been so amazing and they've been featured on the SPI podcast. Um, and we'll put a link to that below in the description so you can listen to, but they have a lot of great pieces of advice and have given us directly a lot of uh, advice. Actually, a big piece of advice was when we were gonna go live on Kickstarter was we wanted different sizes, different colors, and they were like, don't do that. Don't do that, keep it as simple as possible, which is a big just overall lesson here to begin with, a uh, bonus lesson for you, which is just like, if you're doing anything, try to keep it as simple as possible. It was Tim Ferriss who had once said, you know, if this were easy, what would it look like? And I think that's a brilliant way to move forward in your business. And it really helps us as entrepreneurs who are already trying to think of other ways to complicate things to simplify so we can actually get things done. So lesson number eight, connect with other people who have done it already. Join mastermind groups, join groups, find groups on Facebook, uh, connect with others at conferences. If they've done it, uh, see what you can do to provide value to them so that they'll be willing to help you if they aren't already. And what's really cool, and we found this over and over and over again in our journey, is that there's there's way more people there who are willing to help than those who aren't. So a lot of important lessons shared here from the relationships that you're building along the way to knowing your numbers and making sure to keep things simple, but prototyping, collecting direct feedback. Lesson number nine for you is related to the launch. You know, originally we were gonna launch this thing in October of 2018. Then we sort of gave it more time to build up more hype and to shoot more videos, collect more feedback, those kinds of things. We actually changed the prototype just a little bit along the way. And then we were gonna launch in November of 2018, which we've delayed again. Now, while the delay, well, we understand, and hopefully you do as well, that the launch of your thing is a big deal. And you wanna put the right ducks in a row before you actually announce it to the world. And what do those ducks mean? It means, well, number one, understanding your numbers. So that's been a big process for us is like understanding, okay, well, how much can we charge and why? And what is it all gonna add to? For Kickstarter specifically, what are the different pledge levels that we're gonna have and those sorts of things. Like those, are, those aren't just decisions you make you know, in a snap, you have to plan and actually calculate and all those those kinds of things. We've been having a lot of discussions with people and doing a lot of research for Kickstarter, for example, for products like this to stack things in our favor. Another important component of a launch is, well, how much uh, support are you gonna get? on that day and from whom. So we've connected with a lot of people and have built a lot of hype on our social channels and you'll see a link to the SwitchPod Instagram and the Twitter page below. Uh, we've been building a lot of hype uh, on our podcast and on our video channels and those kinds of things, um, which, is, which has been great. We've been getting a lot of people excited about it at these events in person, which is great. So that's our target audience. We have a wait list of about 2000 people right now who are waiting for the launch of this thing, which is really cool at the time of us filming this video here. But we also have created a lot of relationships with other influencers who uh, we've de developed relationships over time and or even really quickly so that we could hopefully get some help from them and support from them on launch day as well. And we've been willing to go and travel to them to film videos and those kinds of things. So hopefully we can get a big splash on launch day. So a lot of this process is the creation is the prototyping and, and, and once you get it to a final prototype stage, like it, it could be really, really tempting to just go, okay, I got it, I'm gonna launch it tomorrow. Um, just like a YouTube video, just because it's done and it's edited doesn't mean that that's the time that you should publish it. Sometimes there's specific strategies to 
letting people know about it ahead of time to announcing it to building buzz and, and marketing, all that stuff is really important too. So just because you have a final product ready doesn't mean you should launch right now, but you should definitely pick a date eventually, hopefully, and make that announcement and hopefully have some people backing you with that in the first place. And you, you never know, there could be a person out there who could really help you that you might not have considered. And it's just important to go out there, step out of your com comfort zone and let them know about it because it is a new thing. They might wanna get behind it and be one of the first to share it too. And then finally, lesson number 10. This has been a very difficult process. Um, a lot of money has been spent I think to date we've spent about $25,000 overall um, and we haven't even launched on Kickstarter yet. This is the prototypes and working with other companies to help us out and the patents and all that stuff. Um, it's a lot of money. It's not a small investment for sure. Could we have spent less? Probably. If we invent something else, we'll probably spend less because we're a little bit smarter now, but hopefully this video is giving you a lot of advice so you don't spend as much money and you actually can approach it in a smart way too. It's also taken a really long time and for somebody who is used to putting my head down on things and having results come a little bit sooner, um, it's, it's, it's definitely something that requires a lot of patience. And so I think the biggest lesson I can offer you with lesson number 10 here is to just have fun. Right, it's about the the climb, not necessarily the mountain that you're that you're climbing, but but the climb itself. And I think it's just when you realize the opportunities that we have available in front of us to create 3D prototypes, to offer something to somebody who has a problem, and actually create that solution for them, to actually see the reactions of somebody holding your plastic or wooden or cardboard thing, to actually visualize that yes, this thing could actually be the thing that solves my problem. It is such a cool thing. No other time in history do we have this much of an ability to create new things and to show it to people and to build businesses out of it too. So the opportunities here are great. And I think it's so cool to see where this might go. I have no idea what it'll, where it'll go. I don't think it'll be a flop, but it could be, but it could be a home run too. I have no idea. And that's part of the fun as well. So hopefully lesson 10, you're having fun in this process. And hopefully by seeing the behind the scenes of, of us going through it too, you can see that, well, we also don't know what we're doing, but we're having a lot of fun trying to figure it out too. So hopefully this video has been really helpful for you. Uh, if you wanna check out SwitchPod and the launch or where it's at now, you can go to switchpod.co and check us out there. And uh, just special thanks to Richie and the team over at Product for helping us really put this together and um, making it happen because this was just an idea that we had one day and here we are we are very close to launching it if not having it launched already by the time you watch this switchpod.co it's here to help and solve a small little problem a small little friction in the vlogger space what's the little friction that you're going to solve with your physical or digital product let me know what you're working on below you don't have to reveal the entire thing but i'd love to know what your next invention or product or idea is going to be leave it in the comment section below and again thank you so much Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Team Flynn, you're amazing, I appreciate you. And Team Flynn for the win, cheers. Of all the prototypes, I think this small one is my favorite because it really uh, was the first one that um, explored the magnets, but I like it just feels really cool as a small one. I mean, maybe in the future we'll create like a mini version, um, but it's kind of cool because I can do it with one hand too.